this month, Fannie Fair launched a new website called The Hive. It's devoted to covering business, technology, and politics. Think of it as focused on the intersection among Wall Street, Washington, and Silicon Valley. And while Condé Nast, the parent company of Vanity Fair, is privately held, we're always on the lookout for additional sources of news and analysis here on Mad Money because doing the homework is such an important part of investing. Now you've got a new venue to help with that homework, which is why I want to sit down with John Kelly. He's the editor of The Hive to learn more about his new site and the stories it'll be telling. Mr. Kelly, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thanks Thank for you. having me, John. Have a seat. All right, gentlemen, I looked over the articles. I mean, you're kind of coming up with a newspaper a day and a magazine. And uh, at first, why? Because we got VF, which is a terrific site. We, we've got New Yorker. I mean, you've got so many good sites as it is. Well, Vanity Fair is a big brand that historically has done a lot of things. It's covered Hollywood as well, if not better than anyone. It's covered fashion and style in the same way. And it's also got this history of long-form muscular journalism for about 25 years going. So the way the world works now digitally, we want to make sure that people who want that content specifically, that kind of muscular journalism, that world where Washington, Wall Street, and Silicon Valley all intersect at the very top with the egos that drive them, they have a site that's producing that content hourly. Well, also, I mean, I read your, your piece about the tragedy in Orlando, and it's by a writer whose book I read from Columbine. Right. Uh, so this is also, you, you, when you have a story that you want to put out today, you've got a place to go for it. Well, that's right. We want to be a mix of both fast-paced journalism that's keeping up with the 24-7 news cycle, but this is also a Vanity Fair site, so it's got to be premium content. The Dave Cullen story you're referring to is something that we're able to pull off because we come from Vanity Fair right. and we have uh, you know, deep ties to our writers, particularly Nick Bilton and Sarah Ellison and Bill Cohan, who are really the driving forces behind this site. So we want to do both. We want to play on, on both those levels. So let's figure out the timing here. We have a businessman running for president. <laughs> and so you've got lots of business articles about the man, right. and yet I haven't read them before. So it's obviously it's a whole new insight that you've got. Well, we're trying to do that. In, indeed, when you have a, a character like Trump, it, it's, it's an endless uh, stream of content, right. and, and you know, we're just trying to uh, offer our perspective. But we want to keep up. We want to offer fresh perspective. We want to offer new reporting. But we want to make sure that we're also competing at the level that Vanity Fair historically competes at, which is long-form, deep-dive journalism right. that, that is unreplicable in a lot of ways. Well, let's talk about the economics of it. Uh, to start a new site these days, people are always intimidated because you've got uh, issues about whether Google's going to queue you, mm -hmm. you know, Yahoo's no longer as important as it was, how you get in search. Uh, how, it, it, a lot of people feel that the advertising dollars aren't going to be there. Mm -hmm. You obviously must feel that the digital world is going to be able to produce a good level of income or you wouldn't do, go for it. You're right. We, we think that The Hive is a premium site that allows us to take advantage of a lot of the, of the trend that advertising is going. We're a native-driven site, so native advertising is a, is a key uh, economic driver for us. Vanity Fair has the greatest live events production department probably in the history of mankind. Right. So right. live events is something that we want to be a big part of. And we're partnering with WNYC Studios to, uh, to produce a, a serious long-form podcast. And that's, that's just the beginning. But you're right. Distributed media is, is what it's all about now. We want people to come to VFHive.com. We want them to come to us through VF.com. But we also have to know, what's our Facebook play? What's our Twitter right. play? We're on LinkedIn, which is something new for us, because we think that there's a huge, I mean, it's obviously a big day for right. LinkedIn. Um, but we think there's a big audience, it's 400 million or so consumers, who want a certain kind of content that they want to share. They want people to know that they're synonymous with this high-level content. Well, let me ask you, because I kind of feel like, you know, the hit show Billionaires, Andrew Ross, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we write about billionaires all the time, the fact that Silicon Valley is filled with them, it, and yet there really hasn't been a place where you just kind of just go and expect. It's all very episodic. It looks like Hive is going to be covering this as its daily meet. That's what we're trying to do. I think that we recognize that really at the top of these three worlds, it converges and it's driven by egos, by people who are looking on some level to remake the world or their industry right. in their own image. That, that's what Trump is trying to do. You could argue that's what Peter Thiel is trying to do recently with, with this Hulk Hogan suit. And the list goes on. So, yes, we want to be the scorecard that covers what everyone's doing, but we also want to be able to imbue it with big ideas. We want to be able to, to, to move these trends forward and to offer the sort of analysis and reporting scoops that Vanity Fair historically has. Okay, so tell me, I mean, you have a very tough piece about Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, I mean, obviously, you're, you're, not, you're willing to go after everybody in this, right? I mean, it's really one of these things where uh, it just doesn't matter. I, I, I've learned things about in, in the Twitter piece, and I thought I knew Twitter well. So you've obviously got a, a kind of a new spin that actually, for me as an investor, is helpful. 
Well, I hope so. I, mean, I think that this Twitter story, and this is Nick Bilden's story you're referring to, and, and he is the, the god of, of, of Twitter journalism. It's a darn good story. And I think that as a, an investor, there's a lot of market-making information here, particularly yes. when it comes to the inability to retain product people, the fact that Twitter has this almost existential chaos. It can't keep its executives. I think that the average lifespan of a Fortune 500 CEO is something like five years, and, and Twitter has had five CEOs in its decade of life. So that's important information. It's, it's material information if you're an investor. And at the end of this story, when, when Jack and Nick are having a very candid conversation, Dorsey says to him, look, there's something about our monthly active users, MAUs, uh, the stagnation that's tied to the chaos of the company. Yeah, I mean, I read it and I said, look, people need to read this article because people on, on Twitter who follow me are constantly saying, is this the month? Is this the day? Is this? But no, I mean, I read it. I said, no, it's just a completely dysfunctional company. I mean, like, it's going to be where it is for a long time. And the dysfunction is embedded in the DNA of the right. company. And I think that, you know, Twitter to me is a morality tale. This is what happens right. when a bunch of young guys get together. They all have some version of, my, of an idea. And they see that whatever the idea has coalesced around is going to be a big, big thing. So they're fighting for the direction right. of the company. And, you know, one of the crazy things about Silicon Valley now, and about, you know, our general mm -hmm. business cycle, but as led by Silicon Valley, is that in 10 years, a company can have all these life cycles. So it can go from an idea to a startup, right. to a well-funded startup, to a public company, to a public company in disarray, to a public company in disarray <laughs> that's now looking for potentially an acquirer. Well, I don't know it's looking, but, but it's a company that, that might be acquired. But no, you've got the full uh, panoply, which is why I think you have to add this people to a, one more site, but important one to try to understand before you pull the trigger on a stock of a publicly traded company, although you cover a lot of private companies right. too. That's John Kelly, editor of Vanity Fair's new website, The Hive, which I gotta tell you is just a great read. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.